it's always nice when you feel like your voice is heard, especially when it comes to concerning situations. And it seems as if the Ravens, they know the pain that the fan base is going through. They know the struggles that we're dealing with right now with J.K. Dobbins and Justice Hill and Gus Edwards and now Marcus Peters. Like, we've been going through it a lot. But when there was even talk initially of Le'Veon Bell and Devontae Freeman, some people were saying Bell, some people were saying Freeman. The Ravens say, you know what? Bring them both on. And then as soon as we had signed Le'Veon Bell to the practice squad, Latavius Murray, he got released from the Saints. Then every single Ravens fan was like, bring us Murray. And what did the Ravens do? They brought us Murray. Jeff Zrebic, he was the first one that talked about it. He said, hey, the Ravens are finalizing a deal to bring in Latavius Murray as well. Now, Latavius Murray, hey, you got your wish, big man. Because just a couple days ago, and yes, I am in a much better mood, uh, even though dealing, this, the situation is what it is. But I do like that the Ravens, they are now trying to stay ready so they ain't got to get ready again. Even though they were already ready, but injuries made them not ready. Anyway, um, I love how they're being proactive and really proactive. Like these dudes have signed, what, four running backs in the past two days? Le'Veon Bell, Devontae Freeman, Trenton Cannon, and now Latavius Murray. And they still got Tyson Williams. So you, you got five running backs. Now two on a practice squad. We'll see where Latavius Murray ends up. But I, I do like that the Ravens are moving. And again, they're being, well, it is being reactive. I mean, they, they being proactive, but at the same, well, they, they're actually being more proactive too. Because you signed Bell and you signed Freeman, but maybe you wanted somebody that's more ready, ready. That's like fresh, fresh. And with Latavius Murray, good fit. And again, a guy, tall guy, <laughs> this dude's a giant. I think he like 6'3". Like that's a big, that's a tall running back. Um, and he runs high. He's very physical. He can catch passes out of the backfield. Last year, he averaged over 4.4 yards of carry with the Saints. And I think the his average uh, catch, his average yards per catch was like 7.7, .7, something like that. So when you think about it, it's like, okay, if you average 4.4 yards rushing as a backup with the Saints, oh, what could you do in this offense here? What, what could you do with the Ravens? And it just gives me high hopes and just it's, 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 it's a good feeling right now. This is a good way to counter just all the sadness that we were going through earlier because the Ravens, they gave us what we wanted. And they literally gave us everything that we wanted. Everything. I remember yesterday when Latavius Murray, uh, when he was first released, and I quote tweeted, I said, I said, bring me him too. Bring me him too. And this was, of course, after the Ravens had signed Le'Veon Bell. Um, and somebody was like, oh, no, that's, that's too many running backs. No, we don't need him. We don't have a cap for it. No, when there's a will, there's a way. There's a will, there's a way. The cap is cap. There's so many ways to work around it and still get that job done. I mean, you see the Saints. Saints over there, they just traded for, uh, what, Bradley Roby? Saints, Saints are always projected to never have any money, never have any cash flow, never have any bread. But they still make it happen every single year. And the Chiefs, oh, we ain't even got to get to the Chiefs. But this is a, uh, a, a good move by the Ravens, man. And they, this just shows that you can never have enough depth. You can never have enough depth because the Ravens running back was a position where it was like, okay, we got JK, we got Gus, we got Justice. He's coming back from injury. And now we got Tyson Williams and Nate McCrary. Man, we're going to have to... Who's going to stay? Who's going to go? I remember back in the day, it seems so long ago, back in the day, we were having all these conversations about who's going to get that third running back spot. Because Tyson Williams been looking good. Nate McCrary been looking good. And Justice Hill been looking injured. He ain't even been playing. So I was thinking like, man, Tyson Williams, it's looking like it's going to be him for that third running back spot. So that, that's the kind of depth that we had before. But then things, they changed like that. Of course, Nate McCrary, 
He got cut, put on waivers. Broncos claimed him. And then the Ravens tried to get Royce Freeman from the Broncos, but that didn't work out because the Panthers claimed him. And then, yeah, you know the rest of the story. So, Ravens stepping up. And again, this is a position, something to remember too, Gus Edwards, undrafted rookie free agent. Tyson Williams, undrafted rookie free agent. They've brought in guys over the years like Justin Forsett, Alex Collins, um, Terrence West, uh, Buck Allen. They did it with LeRon McClain. He was a fullback. They had him at halfback. They Ravens, they have a way of being able to really get the most out of a running back. Remember Ricky Williams, too, and he was here with Ray Rice, and then Ray Rice and Willis McGahee, too. Oh, man, we had some combinations. But Ravens, they know how to get the most out of running backs. So when you think about this, we currently have these running backs on the roster now who have been ballers before, who are proven guys already. So since we have these guys, along with the injection of youth with Tyson Williams, for me, it, it, I'm still encouraged by the run game and still think it's going to do its thing because it just is it's strong. And again, Greg Roman, you know Greg Roman, what he's good at, he's great at. What he's good at, he's phenomenal at, and that's really building this run game. That is obviously his strength. That's been his bread and butter for his entire career as an offensive coordinator in the NFL. The run game. Now, the pass game, <laughs> you lead that to Kiki and TT. They let them boys take care of that. But that's been Greg Roman's strength. Run game. And we've seen time and time again, and even just under Lamar Jackson alone. Who was Alex Collins? I know some people, and that's not a diss to Alex Collins at all, obviously. But where did Alex Collins come from? Like, most people ain't know who Alex Collins was. They're like, oh, this guy from, Raven signed this guy from Seahawks practice squad? Uh, okay. Where, where, where did Gus Edwards come from? It's like these guys, they, they just, they, they came out of nowhere. But they made a significant impact. But now we got guys that have been somewhere already. And Tyson Williams, who hasn't played in the NFL game yet, a regular season game. So we got guys that's been somewhere, and we got guys coming out of nowhere. So we got a good injection of, of it all, good mix of it all. Latavius Murray, not only did the fans get what we all wanted, and like I said, everybody got what they wanted, because some people wanted Bell, some people wanted Freeman, some people wanted Murray, some people wanted them all. We got them all. But Latavius Murray, remember the video we did a few days ago where Latavius Murray, Josina Anderson said she had just got off the phone with him. And he said that he wanted to play for the Ravens. He wanted to play for the Ravens. What's happening now? He's getting his wish. He gets to play for the Ravens. He talked about how the Ravens have suffered injuries at the running back position. But he said he knows that's a team. He said he's just ready to get to work. But he knows that's a winning team. And they, they got what it takes to get the job done. Again, like we said earlier. Gus Edwards' blow it sucks. The, the, the J.K. Dobbins, the Justice Hill, the Marcus Peters, the L.J. Fort. It's tough. But this does not deter the Ravens from their mission. This does not mean, oh, man, Super Bowl hopes out the window. It doesn't mean that. It really doesn't. Am I saying the Ravens are going to get to the Super Bowl? No. I hope they do. We hope they do. Of course. We want them to. But these are very, very super significant injuries. But the game still got to be played. It still got to be played. And the Ravens, they, they still got to keep it pushing. And Marcus Peters, he'll understand that. Gus Edwards, all, all them boys, they will all understand it. Because they know the business of the NFL. They know the nature of the game of football. It is a, an extremely physical sport. It takes a lot. It's a physical game. It's definitely a mental game, too. If you ain't got the mentals for football, it ain't going to work out. It's not. So these guys, it's, they, they are already, already being battle tested. Already. Something to think about. Just to sort of give you a little bit of encouragement. 
Do you remember last season? Think about this now. Do you remember last season when the Ravens lost Lamar Jackson? They lost, uh, what did Gus Edwards play? I don't even remember, but I know Mark Ingram was out. But remember when they lost the, pretty much the whole team or half the team to the outbreak? Remember that? And they still had a game to play. They lost, like, it was, they lost starters everywhere. Offense, defense, everywhere. They lost so many people. They were playing with so many backups. And they were going against the Steelers. And they were going against Steelers starters. And yes, they lost the game. They lost the game. But guess what? These boys fought. And they fought hard. And something else that I want to remind you of too Let me take you back Because we've been talking Especially with all, all the injuries We've been talking so much about the 2015 season Now No matter how you feel about John Harbaugh Let's go back to 2015 Where the Ravens went 5-11 and 11. They're only two They went 5-11 and 11 And literally everybody was hurt Except Jimmy Smith Everybody got hurt that year. But these guys, in, in two of their 11 losses, only in two of their 11 losses was the score. They lost by more than one score. With everybody hurt in only two of 11 losses with this banged up, beat up, injured up team. In only two games, they lost by more than one score. Every other game that they lost, obviously they won five, but every other game that they lost, the other nine that they lost, they were all one-score games. So this team that was so hurt, so bruised, so beat up, they still fought. And you, you got to give credit to Harbaugh for that. You got to give him credit for that. We got a lot of gripes with Harbaugh here and there, but one thing is that his team, they're going to play for him. They are going to play for him. They're going to fight. Sometimes they may not always come out as victors, but they are going to fight and play hard for John Harbaugh. So this season is far from over. If you think the season is over, I can't tell you how to think, but I, I wouldn't think like that. Just my personal opinion. In my opinion, it's obviously not over. It ain't even get started yet. They ain't even played the first game yet. So... These guys, got a, they got a long way to go. So, team, keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. I love y'all. Um, and we'll see what happens next with these Baltimore Ravens. But, again, I love them being proactive about this and really just stacking up a position that was once strong. Then it got weak immediately, but now they're building it back up again. Team, keep it clean. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. We out.